folks, my name is Geriatric Jones. You may know me as the narcissistic owner of the overhyped Dallas Cowboys. During the lockout I had an opportunity to visit a friend of mine who suffered from an unfortunate injury years ago that left him paralyzed from the neck down. While I was in the room the physician and medical student came to round and made an interesting finding. Since I owned the hospital, I stuck around as the physician taught the medical student about my friend's condition. When the doctor asked the student to explain their finding the student replied, It is a one centimeter area of erythema over the sacrum with intact skin and no induration, to which the teacher concurred. After the medical student correctly diagnosed the wound, the discussion turned to the treatment options. When prompted the sharp student began to rattle off treatment options beginning with 1. Frequent bed turning, 2. Use of wet to dry dressings, 3. Whirlpool therapy, 4. Broad spectrum antibiotics and 5. Surgical debridement. The physician and myself were utterly amazed at this brilliant future physician. After listening to this discussion I decided to do a little research on my own and this is what I found. Pressure ulcers are also known as bed sores or decubitus ulcers. They are caused by prolonged pressure against the skin, inhibiting an adequate supply of blood to the skin and underlying tissues, leading to its breakdown. There are four stages you need to be able to recognize. Stage 1. The skin is not broken but is erythematous and does not blanch. Stage 2. The epidermis is broken, creating a shallow open sore. Stage 3. The break in the skin extends through the dermis into the subcutaneous and fat tissue. And finally, stage 4. The breakdown extends into the muscle and can extend as far down as the bone. When discussing pressure ulcers one of the main components to this topic is risk factor identification. Risk factors most commonly seen include increased age, poor nutrition, decreased blood pressure, rookie nursing staff, impaired mobility, current smoking, low PMI, confusion, urinary and fecal incontinence and the use of restraints. There is a cornucopia of other diseases that predispose a patient to pressure ulcers all of which place the patient in the rotundid. Hakaga? Obtundid state. The key to treatment. Prevention. The cornerstone of preventing pressure ulcers includes frequent repositioning of the patient. If a comatose patient is not repositioned every two to four hours, they will run the risk of developing pressure ulcers at any point on their body where a bone places pressure on the nearby skin. Other methods to prevent so-called bed sores include the use of foam or pillow wedges, lubricants, protective dressings and daily skin inspection. Treatment options are based on the staging of pressure ulcers, which I discussed earlier. For my friend's condition, a stage 1 ulcer, the best treatment is frequent turning. For stage 2, 3, or 4 ulcers treatment modalities may include the use of wet to dry dressings, whirlpool therapy, Broad spectrum antibiotic or sharp surgical debridement if the ulcer is extensive or exudative. As you can see, pressure ulcers can cause significant morbidity and mortality to older adults, even multimillionaire owners of NFL teams like me. It is important to recognize the risk factors for developing pressure ulcers, the stage of the ulcer, techniques for preventing their development, and how to treat them. The most important thing to remember is to keep them moving.